Today I'm going to introduce you to a grape and a wine that has an incredible cult following. The first time I tasted it, it was a wow. It's sort of a cross between uh, a Northern Rhone Syrah, a, a Nebbiolo from Italy's Piemonte, and a Red Burgundy, which of course is a Pinot Noir, all wrapped into one single grape. Have you ever heard of Blaufrankisch? Most people haven't. <laughs> I remember the first time somebody said Blaufrankisch to me, I said Gesundheit. <laughs> well, today we're going to find out all about it. This is really a great one. Come on, let's go. Hey, Posse. I'm Pierre and welcome to Asti Wine Consultants. Today we're going to be talking about the Blaufrankisch grape. We're going to learn five key things about this grape varietal. Some general trivia, where it's from, the basics of the grape varietal, its taste profile, and some suggested food pairings. For those of you who are not familiar with Blaufrankisch and the Blaufrankisch grape, I hope you'll expand your horizons and indulge yourself and actually go out and get it. Just a heads up, it may not be easy for you to find, but I absolutely know that you'll love it. Now also keep in mind at any time, if you like what you hear, click like, subscribe and hit the little bell so you'll be notified when there's a new post. Also make sure you share this with your friends. I'm sure they would appreciate it too. Are you ready to get started? Number one, some general trivia. Since its medieval origins in Austria, Blaufrankisch has become one of Austria's most beloved red wine varietals. This unique grape offers flavors of black cherry, blackberry, dark chocolate, allspice, and pepper. It brings with it moderate body, medium high tannins, and medium high acidity. You know, pair a, a bottle of Blaufrankisch with uh, Eastern European classics, you know, such as uh, stewed meats or even sausage. Uh, more on that actually in a minute. Uh, the typical quality to price ratio also makes it easier for you to dip your toe into the, the Blaufrankisch pool. You'll find it in the sort of the 15 to the $25 price range, which makes it easy to try this new experiment. It's possible that Blaufrankisch was being cultivated in in present Austria in about the 10th century, you know, during the Middle Ages. Back in the day, uh, the better wines of Austria and Hungary were called Frankish to distinguish them from the less highly uh, prized grapes. Oh, oh by the way, uh, Blau Frankish actually means Blue Frankish. The first documented recognition of the Blau Frankish uh, came in uh, about 1862 at a, a wine exhibition in Vienna. Uh, the same grape came out of Hungary, uh, which, but it was, it was known as the uh, uh, Limburger uh, grape. In 1875, Blaufrankisch became the, uh, the sanctioned name for it. Oh, and, and just another real quick trivia uh, piece. Whenever you're buying an Austrian wine, check on the top of the bottle. Do you see how there's this red and white in, in emblem? That emblem is actually the Austrian flag. Uh, whether it's on the Blaufrankisch or the, the Austrian Gruner Veltliner or, or even their, their uh, Riesling, it just shows it is from Austria. Blaufrankisch. <laughs> I just love saying that word, Blaufrankisch. Well, anyhow, uh, coming right up is number two, where it grows. Now, as you can see on the chart, Blaufrankisch is not a very widely planted grape as far as the, the total volume is concerned. You know, Hungary and Austria make up about 55% of the total uh, global production. However, even though it's not uh, represented on the chart, it's, it's gaining popularity, particularly in the States. I'll get to that actually a little bit more in, in just a second. Uh, how are you doing there? 
Will you please do me a favor? I'm doing a simple survey. If you've had Blaufrankisch, please write yes. And if you haven't, please write no in the comment section below. Number three, the basics of the varietal. In the mid 20th century, uh, Blaufrankisch spread out of its European home with, with many winemakers in Washington State beginning to, to cultivate the grape. Now, Washington State uh, offers a similar cool climate to Austria. Uh, it's most commonly called Limburger in Washington State. You can see here uh, a, a list of states in the U.S. that are planting Blaufrankisch. Uh, by the way, I was just in the state of Michigan speaking to the head of Michigan State University's Enology and Soil Department. They indicated that there are a number of wineries in northern Michigan that are making some absolutely beautiful Blaufrankisch. Like in Austria and Washington State, the grape does incredibly well in the shorter, cooler growing seasons of Michigan. Number four, taste profile. Now Blaufrankisch is medium dry, medium bodied, medium high tannins, medium high acidity with an ABV, that's alcohol by volume, of between 13 and and 15%. You know, it really is a, a medium wine. In other words, it's very versatile. And those who can find it tend to absolutely love it. It offers primary uh, flavors of blackberry, black cherry, red currant, dark chocolate, allspice, and pepper. The structure and mouthfeel are dense and full, though uh, this is less pronounced when uh, the wine is young. While many Blaufrankisch wines are consumed young, the fuller and stronger versions have good aging potentials and can, can develop smooth and velvety characteristics over time. Now real quick, number five. Due to its medium high tannins, Blaufrankisch is not ideal for your lighter dishes such as seafood, salads, or desserts. You need to remember the old adage, if it grows together, it goes together. This is an old world wine from Austria and Hungary generally. That means Blaufrankisch pairs well with schnitzel, red cabbage, broche, bratwurst, smoked sausages, uh, sort of uh, uh, red potato goulash, uh, cheese dumplings, stewed rabbit, uh, sort of the Austrian version of fried chicken and pork. Uh, it also goes well with roast beef and gravy, paella, most kinds of meat from poultry to duck, uh, to actually meatloaf uh, and, and heavy beef stew. Oh, and, and the rich grilled foods like a barbecue tenderloin or smoked tofu burgers. This one can easily become one of your new favorites. I'd say the consumer awareness is probably the biggest challenge this wine has, but it's delicious. As a whole, Blaufrankisch has been uh, aided by changing consumer attitudes towards unfamiliar grapes. Wine drinkers are getting more adventurous, looking for, for value in different pockets of the wine world. You know, like 20 years ago, uh, it was a, a, a very hard sell, but generally folks are becoming much more open and, and explorative with their, with their taste. Folks, if you give it a try, let me know. Well, there you have it. Everything you need to know about the Blaufrankisch grape. Thanks again for joining me. Until next time, cheers. Hey Posse, thanks so much for investing the time to watch this video. I trust it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And please consider hitting subscribe. Also, click here to check out our new online shop. We have a great lineup of wine-related items that will help you get the most out of your wine experience. Oh, and be sure to check out these other videos. Until next time, cheers.